What's up everybody? Welcome back to FNG Academy. I just had a quick announcement. I'm proud to say that we've been helping people get selected for three years now. I've been getting a lot of messages about uh, people thanking us and saying that they just graduated from uh, selection and they got selected. Uh, people graduating the Q course. Uh, one of my buddies just sent me a video uh, from the Charlie committee. Yes. If you guys have ever heard of the FNG Academy, raise your hands and all their hands went up and it just filled me with pride. Um, so part of the way that we do that is making sure that you guys are physically fit and ready for selection. And the way we've been doing that for the past couple years is by sending you to a Green Beret we know and trust, Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. So if you want to get selected, you need to be in the best shape possible and you need a programmer who knows what they're talking about. So go check out Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. Use code word BUCK to get a discount. Tell him we sent you and hook you up. Congrats to everyone who's been getting selected lately and we'll see you guys on the next one. What's up guys, welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. In this episode, we're doing a pretty dope show that we essentially shat on the first episode, The Unit. <laughs> And then all you guys are like, oh, you love this episode, but you shit on the first, you love this show, but you shit on the first episode. It gets so much better after the first yeah. episode. It's a good series. I it actually is a really, really good like series. It. I still do fast forward the, the parts with the women uh, <laughs> for obvious reasons. Like, I don't. Just coming out hot. Dude, well, from I, the gate. Like, listen, like, we were in the military. We know how military wives are. I don't want to watch that reenacted. <laughs> I'm sorry, but no thank you. So if you're outside the military and you don't know how military wives interact, then and you want to watch a dramatized version of that, have fun. You know what's fun, funny is that's true, because you can see the hierarchy in the wives. Yeah. And that's something that legitimately happens yeah. in the military, too. It's, but it's, it's almost like they become a wife, a unit of wives or something. Yeah, and they, they somehow like carry over our rank and act accordingly. Yeah. Like, you ever see an officer's wife? Like, she's an entitled yeah. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> look, Send it. <laughs> I look over at Abel. <laughs> He's like. <laughs> Jesus, just imagining all the officers and officers' wives that are watching right now. Yeah, like, you. <laughs> If you if legitimately though, if you're, if you're a wife and you think that you somehow have authority because of your husband's rank, you're an idiot. So cool. All right, let's get on with the show. But the cool thing about this episode, we'll get into it. But like, all the discrepancies, all the, I think the major issues that we had in episode one, were answered and addressed in episode two, which was, I thought was really cool. Yeah, I think the first episode was also a pilot too. So, I mean, yeah. they had some room to, or a lot of growing that they needed to do, which they did. I mean, yeah. it's a great they, series. They so. come in literally in episode two and start like using the story to address all the, the issues that we talked about in episode one, which overriding chain of command, pulling a wazoo mm. mission out of your butt. All yeah. of that is answered by the writers in episode two. They listen to the show. They, they listen, or <laughs> they, they just knew that it was ridiculous, which yeah. I thought was really cool. It's like, yeah. like, hey, they understand that this is ridiculous, and they did it on purpose. Yeah. And then when you came back, episode two, they explained it. But let's jump into episode two. Guys, if you don't know, we got some cool stuff going on. If you're getting, if you're trying to go special operations and you want the tips um, that we used to have on this channel all the time, and that's how this channel started, we still do that stuff. We just now do it on the Patreon um, because that way we could just be more free flowing with it and it's just a better platform. So go check out the Patreon and the FNGacademy.com. Uh, all right, guys, so let's jump into this episode and let you know what we think about the unit episode two. This mattress isn't big enough for the three of us. <laughs> she got some girth on that yawn. What happened? You That's the scene. To, you wanted to keep going? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, a call no. on that one. It's got to be done, right? 
I just was watching the the clearing scene of this, and I was just like, "What the fuck is happening?" Because you guys, I don't remember the show. Like, yeah. it, we watched it so many years ago, and I really did like it back when it came out. And so I was just watching the clearing. And I was like, "This is ass." And then it was a dream, a bad yeah. dream, and I was like, "Oh, thank God!" I was doing the same thing. Like uh, people were flagging each other, like yeah, all kind of so crazy terrible. shit. Terrible. People were getting shot and then just going down, and they were just like, "Ah, screw that guy!" And like moving past them. <laughs> and then, and then all of a sudden, his his wife voice starts coming in. It's like, "Oh, it's a nightmare." <laughs> How true is this, though? I know every time I PCS, we would always have the the military would move our stuff. So we always had an air mattress, a couple like pots uh, and yeah. pans and shit. Yep. And so we're sleeping on an air mattress, waiting for our stuff to arrive. Uh, they get the wrong delivery, which is something that we had too. They were like, oh, our stuff's here. And we go out and it's like, not our our stuff. It's oh, somebody it completely different. We had to wait like another four days. But I, this is very accurate as yeah. a, what a PCS move or a permanent change of station move is. Dude, when we were coming from Germany, all our stuff was stored somewhere. And then, because I, what are they? Because they move it ahead of you. Yeah. It got to the location in the States, got stored in a warehouse, and the warehouse leaked. Oh. So all our stuff got wet. And so they had to we had to go through and find what had mold on it yeah. and then start the process to get reimbursed for all our yep. stuff. And I was like, you guys are killing me. People don't understand. Like your stuff will show up, things are be broken, mm -hmm. things are missing. I had a a bicycle and a, like the forks were just completely sheared off. I don't even know how that happened. But the bike was ruined. It's they don't treat your stuff with with dignity and respect. No, it's nice to not have to move though, because after I got mm -hmm. in the military, I had to move myself, and that's that just sucks. terrible. I'm the only one who thinks she was saying make it stop in a very oddly sexual manner. Yeah, oh stop. for sure. Like she's supposed to be trying to sleep, but that doesn't sound like that. Out in two minutes. Satellite appears to be I just thought this scene was funny because it's like a piece of Chinese satellite equipment is discovered. <laughs> it's falling in Africa in this, but didn't we just fucking have that? Chinese spy balloon carried equipment to collect intelligence. Yeah, we sent an F-22 Raptor to shoot it down <laughs> <laughs> after it went across the entire nation. Similar. <laughs> so it's like nothing new. <laughs> it's it's like been happening for the, a while. The unit talking about it freaking 20 years ago. When did this show come out? Uh, early 2000s. Very early 2000s. Early 2000s. So literally like 20 years ago when we're just doing the same dog and pony show with China trying same to thing. spy on this us. This thing repeats itself. <laughs> it's just like instead of a satellite, it's a balloon. couple things i think is really funny how he's like holding the bottom of the bag he's like Dee. yeah Dee. it's like bro you can't handle the recoil it's like a 762 <laughs> i think you'll be fine to just shoot it yeah and then second is like it seemed like a really dumb shot to take yeah for sure one thing i did notice though and uh, some people might not pick this up is on an operation like this they're not using u.s weapons right so obviously they're not supposed to be there or whatever and so they're going to use weapons that are native to that area or just not u.s made weapons yeah so yeah. when they find shells you know they pick up battlefield recovery of weapons or something like that there's no u.s signature yeah that's so, a good call pretty interesting the recoil on that fucking <laughs> rifle is insane though he's like Dang! i was looking at that optic wait is this the same guy yeah the optic changed did it because it went from like a little tube like six inches long and now it's like a full-on scope and it, I, to me, the the shot just didn't seem to make sense. So you have an enemy unit moving up to you. Again, I'm not picking apart the show. I like. Yeah. I I really really enjoyed this episode a lot. Um, it was fun to watch, especially going back. Like I really enjoyed it. But I just thought that was like, would you have taken that shot? Maybe I don't know. Like mm -hmm. maybe the idea, maybe it'd be better to try and take the shot if you're really good. 
and you could hit a per the person standing it. Maybe you could hit a tire. Because mm -hmm. yeah. if you pop the tire, at least you slow down the whole convoy's approach to you. That would be a lot better. Stop their vehicle. If yeah. they have to dismount and run, it's going to take them a lot longer. Yeah, and then just shooting one guy. That that would be one hell of a shot, though. The, the distance and they're moving oh, and the elevation insane. change yeah. and all that. There's a lot of things to consider. And I, this right here is not going to cut it. No, I honestly don't think I would have taken the shot. I'd just yeah. be like, let's fucking go and yeah. then save our ammunition for when... Uh, we could be more effective. You see, as soon as he took the shot, then they opened up on him yeah. with the machine gun. So, I mean. You just opened a whole can of worms that <laughs> just made your situation worse. <laughs> now I'm going to teach you a whole new lovely thing. Didn't you join the Army to learn? What's combat loading? Combat loading is loading of a packed pallet aircraft ship or any other conveyance to maximize combat readiness to the point of debarkation. That's right. Fucking nerd. You want to put yeah. the ammunition so that it is first off before the dark pours. That's correct. And that's a good start. Now, your task is take this manifest and under my intermittent supervision load this pallet using at all times your powers of deduction create a perfect combat loading ouch dude <laughs> fucking ouch bro he hit him with that new guy shit real hard yes i was just that new guy shafting dude like we're gonna go on deployment you're gonna stay back here yep and this random nco is gonna come and just shaft you <laughs> support with this guy <laughs> horrible mission of loading a pallet for a night tropical operation yeah and when in the fact that he knew the definition was just annoying like i for me that was a huge pet peeve i always hated when people would like put you on the spot my first team sergeant used to do that which as a new guy it's kind of expected but he would always like hit me with like what is this and if you didn't say the definition perfectly right as it is in the ranger handbook or whatever the case may be then you're you're getting tough <laughs> you're you're working out doing That's something so i annoying. hated that it's like, bro, you don't even know what it is. The only reason you know what it is because you just looked it up to fucking quiz me on it to make me do push-ups. <laughs> don't be a jackass. You know what's funny about this is I have a story where uh, when we were in Nepal, we had to build our pallet. And normally, for some reason, when we did we palletized everything, we didn't really build our pallet. I guess we did, but we this one time, we had to go pick up the pallet and bring it and then put everything on it, and then you've got the net that goes over top mm -hmm. of it. There's certain regulations as far as height and all that that it can be... So we spent all this time, we built this pallet. We are so proud. Like, this pallet is beautiful. We get the forklift, and we're driving it over. Uh, we're on the airfield driving it over to all the other pallets. And there's some Air Force dudes standing there. And as soon as, like, we're coming up, I see them just start laughing. And I'm just like, what the fuck are these guys laughing at? And we drop the pallet off the forklift, and he walks up. One of the Air Force loadmasters walks up, and he's like, your pallet's upside down. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and the metal or the aluminum like rectangle pallet yeah. at the bottom has a top and a bottom that I didn't know oh, about. I didn't know. That. I had no idea. And we built this entire pallet. Spent hours building this thing. It was oh, upside that down. Sucks. We're on the air. My team sergeant is standing there, just staring, like looking right into my soul because I'm the Charlie on the team. <laughs> so I was in charge of building this fucking thing. Oh, it sucks. We had to completely disassemble this pallet right there on the airfield. Flip it over. Rebuild it. I felt like the biggest asshole <laughs> it was so embarrassing oh that sucks <laughs> dude anytime you get scolded in front of the whole team it's just a shitty day it's, whenever it's, it's like, your fault you're yeah. just like oh fuck you you do everything you can to avoid ever being directly your fault because yep. that's the worst situation yep. especially for the bravos the worst the scariest times at the range oh so if you <laughs> scheduled something wrong if you didn't set it up right if you didn't have your cards Everyone's standing there ready to train, and they walk up, and the and the the range inspectors are like, "Sorry, you're not a go. You have to look at the whole team and be like, Ooh, we're <laughs> not training today. <laughs> That's terrifying." Pursuant to your actions on the assault and recapture of a hijacked airliner, Wyndham Idaho, sir, I uh, I don't, I don't deserve any special recognition for that mission. The entire team. No, 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 son. We aren't here to decorate you. <laughs> The government's deciding whether or not to prosecute you and your pals for violating a direct <laughs> order by assaulting that hijacked airplane without authorization. You are entitled to an attorney. Get your mission notes and a fresh set of clothes and meet us in the cave in an hour. All right, pause. Seems like he misread the situation. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> the fucking Terminator's there. Uh, yeah. That guy's terrifying. He is. I will he forever is. see him as a metal human being. That's all I see, no matter <laughs> what he does. a fucking knife hand that's going to punch <laughs> through you and kill you. But I just thought that was funny because we spent the whole first episode bashing that mission. Yeah. And the second episode, the writers have an FBI agent trying to prosecute him for the stupidity on that mission. 
So we, they knew it was stupid the whole time. We were too quick to judge. Too quick to they, judge. They knew it the whole time. Right. They did it on purpose. The whole thing was supposed to be like, look at these crazy cowboys. Yeah. And, you know, you have to answer for that shit. So I really, really appreciated jumping into the second episode and being like, ah, they knew it. Yeah. They're not stupid. They wrote that in on purpose. And now they're justifying it and creating more drama and more, you know, like... Uh, story out of how stupid that thing was. Imagine being the new guy on a team. Your entire team has gone and deployed, and you have to now represent that team at anything, let alone... To the FBI. Let alone, yeah, to the FBI, where all of you could go to jail. Talk about pressure. I would have just pled the fifth, dude. I'd be like, lawyer. Yeah. Lawyer. I'm like, nope, I'm not playing this game. Lawyer. <laughs> like, I don't... That's one thing I've learned, guys. If you, if you ever have being questioned, always ask for a lawyer. Always, nice. always. I learned that from watching First 48. Yeah, always ask for a lawyer. <laughs> don't talk. If you think you're going to explain yourself into a better situation, even if you're innocent, just don't. Yeah. You. It doesn't make any sense. You have people that know what's going on, the detectives, and then you have no fucking clue, and you're just going to give them the information like, and make it better. No. <laughs> Call the lawyer. The lawyer gets their side of the story. And then tells you their side of the story and what you you are and are not gonna say. I love like, it when they're like, it "Doesn't if make you, sense." If you want to help yourself, you need to talk to us. Yeah, fuck you, <laughs> fuck you, help myself. Uh -uh. Cops ever come to me? Lawyer. I said it right here, right now. Don't ever fucking come talk to me, lawyer. I lawyer up immediately, bro. I don't give a shit. I'm innocent. Shit has nothing to do with me. You could come to me, ask my what my neighbor did on a fucking incident where his car got stolen. I'd be like, lawyer. <laughs> I'm ain't like, no I, snitch. I ain't no snitch, bitch. <laughs> lawyer. I watched the whole thing. Lawyer. <laughs> You're going to fucking ask my lawyer what you think about that. Can you move the contents without destroying the data and leave the box intact? Give me a watch. You're smart cookie, ain't you? You mean... For a black man? I mean, even for a black man. But I can't give up the satellite component, and you know that. Foss. We don't want that bad. <laughs> are, are, are Africans, like, <laughs> worried about racism? <laughs> See, you mean for a black man? I'm pretty sure that's, like, an American thing. Like, <laughs> They said the that's same African, thing. That's, like, African-Americans worried about like some shit an African American would say, not they're, like an they're African. The they're the majority over there. Yeah. Over there. Like, like, what? You think people are racist towards you, bro? Like you, it's because he's American. I don't understand the dynamic here. Uh, like the whole having an African throw in like a <laughs> anti-racial comment was just kind of weird. For a black man. For, for a black man. And then he's he's like, I mean, even for a black man, like, <laughs> like what are you guys talking could about? Could have done this, without that part. Yeah, this is some weird banter. But anyway, so the scene where he's he's messing with that um the, f the component whatever, the component mm -hmm. and it's it's got he's got a geiger <laughs> counter on it it's like a geiger tracker yeah and it's like what is this fucking call of duty you walk, that's a, one of the things <laughs> we call it you walk around looking for the components of the guy like who has that tier one i like it <laughs> i understand that they would have it right because they had a mission yeah knowing that they would need it but then the African guy has it too. Oh, you're right. Yeah, he does. And so it's like, so everyone's just got these like uh, Geiger sensors. I mean, they're all looking for the same thing, so maybe. And this one component, I don't know anything about these components in these satellites. It just seems funny to me that, it's, that they're yeah. all like. Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> and then he, he takes the tritium out of the uh, compass and then replaces that in order to trigger the Geiger. Yeah. I thought that was actually really smart because those the tritium is a radioactive uh, uh, material. element, material, whatever. And so the fact that they actually did that in the show and yeah. broke it, put it in there, a lot of people might not understand like why they did that, but that's actually true. The tritium is radioactive. I don't know to what level. It's a very yeah. low radioactivity, I guess. I don't know the correct terminology. Yeah, so it's a little bit of a stretch there, but overall it's still cool because it's like it makes sense. Yeah, it does. Like it, it, it just shows they've got good uh, advisors on this show. Yeah, pretty cool scene. You look like a fool. Hello. Hello. Hello, run like crazy, brother. Look at, look at, look at. 
<laughs> he floats, dude. <laughs> Yo, that motherfucker can run for days. <laughs> yeah, he does. It's active. Watch how Lil gets up and runs again. This <laughs> shit. He's just floating. Look at. We should both now. Dude, he's a whoop, 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 whoop. Holy oh, hello. Rumor is he's still running to this yeah. day. <laughs> like, hello looks like he run 40 <laughs> miles without breaking a sweat, dude. He just. Uh, that's probably the most accurate part of this movie <laughs> or this show. All right, boss. Well, sorry, that was a really stupid time stamp. <laughs> I just saw a little running. Mm -hmm. He's just floating, dude. <laughs> like. Nice. All right, we're going to the fallback. Fallback rendezvous is. Nineteen miles. I want to see the hot box with the satellite component in it. I figure the truck has a stretcher. If not, rig one. Full canteens. Fill them up, drink up, ruck up. How's our friend holding? That's a lot of blood. Yo, my guy just said nineteen miles without flinching, bro. I feel like <sighs> with a body, with a fucking, yes. you gotta carry somebody else. That wasn't as accurate, I think. Uh, there would have been a a bunch of very choice words, yeah, some name calling, yeah. They would have still got the mission done. They would have done it, but he wouldn't have just taken it in stride like that. He'd been like, "You stupid motherfucker! What do you mean, bro? You can't wear only working jeep." One thing we do in the military is we bitch we, a and lot. The higher you go, the more you bitch. Yeah, like it's like you just become <laughs> the biggest like drama queen, like uh, or um, it really is like the higher echelons you go, it's like the just the more spoiled you get, and the more accustomed you are to getting your way. I don't, people probably don't realize how much complaining SF guys do. Oh, it's ridiculous. It, we, prima donnas. That's <laughs> prima, what I was that's it, Yeah, we're fucking prima donnas, bro. SF guys complain so much about everything, everything. about the smallest. Like, we do it. We yeah. do it, but we're not going quietly. No, oh, yeah, <laughs> we're complaining the entire time. So unless keg, once you get to keg, it just does full circle, and you're like infantry again, and you just keep your mouth shut and do the mission. I fucking doubt it. We need to get Tyler Gray on the phone because I'm sure they com yeah. they complain just as much or more, probably more. They're yeah. they're tier one. You're tier one. The higher you go, the more you complain. That's the way it is. You got fixers for everything, and so it'll be like I'd be like, well, someone else do this. Nin someone else carry this. Guy. Nineteen miles. Nineteen miles. Are you crazy, bro? That's a. I don't know if you. You guys have ever moved have ever walked 19 miles that Shit sucks sucks dude now do that carrying somebody yeah you're essentially doing a uh sfas like a team week mission yeah for 19 miles Let's in just... africa in the desert in the dead of the uh, heat. people are trying to kill you by the yeah. way I don't think you have nearly enough water. <laughs> you should fill up, fill up your canteens. I'm like, with what, my guy? <laughs> with this, like, <laughs> nasty, stagnant water? Here? Yeah, it's like, Good I'm luck. pretty sure I don't want to shit myself to death before I walk <laughs> myself to death. Like, no thank you, bro. Oh, like, are God. we going to do it? Yes, but golly, I'm going to be complaining and bitching the whole time. <laughs> At least to you. At least even if I'm not talking oh. to the boss, I'll be like, dude, are you fucking kidding me, bro? I was thinking about that walk, right? It's going to start off, everybody's complaining. Then there's going to go to like an hour and a half to two hours where nobody says a word. Yeah, just pure <laughs> anger. Everybody's just, just yeah, just why? <laughs> What's the word? Wallowing in their own sorrow? Yeah. That's not right. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's wallowing. Okay. They shot me and they gave me up. How about that? Cubs are swinging wild. So compass has two different readings. Pick the one swings for you. Predominant winds from the north. Rocks pitted on the north face. Two eight degrees true will be about about there. All right, coffee breaks over. One, two, three. Yo, imagine being the fucking guy responsible for calling out your direction. <laughs> Get that shit wrong. Everything's on the line Dude, right there. 19 miles you have to go. If you're off by the slightest bit, you're screwed. Being point man sucks. Yeah. There is so much pressure being the or being the compass guy. That's what I was like. It reminds me of selection. Just dude, honestly, the worst time I had on the map was in a training exercise, uh, getting ready for Afghanistan. So we had a time sensitive target. We were in uh Texas. Mm -hmm. And they were like, hey, mission just came down. We need all this. Plan the mission. Everything's got to be done in like 20 minutes. And we're like, fuck. And so I looked to the senior Echo and I was like, hey, bro, like I need coordinates for where we're going because I was responsible for the movement. 
And he's like, just punch it into the GPS. As soon as you, uh, as soon as we step off the bird, we'll pull security. Uh, bird will take off. We'll punch in the uh, coordinates and follow the GPS. And I was like, all right, cool. So you could plug it into the GPSs while I can get back to the rest of the planning. And he's like, check. Plugs in the GPS. Sure enough. I don't know if they fucking planned it or what. GPS fails. Yeah. <laughs> so I had nothing nothing to go off of i didn't have time to get a map i didn't have time to fucking like see at just basic coordinates and direction distance and direction it it's wrong of me to say i didn't have time i didn't do it yeah i i trusted too much in technology and that's always a mistake yeah and so a f- the f- we get off the fucking bird it takes off we do security and everyone looks at me and goes and where do we go and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question. Like, oh, this is the worst fucking experience of my life. And the team starts like, are you fucking serious? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> don't yell at me. <laughs> what Corey said was going to work on the GBS. <laughs> that was so bad, dude. <laughs> That's you know, hilarious. They ended up, someone else pulled out a map, and he looked at it and was like, it's fucking that way. And I was like, okay. Well, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, I was like, I'm just going to wait for you to help me. I had to do that. We did a, a thing, a full mission profile like that in Korea. And the same thing, dropped off with a bird. And for some reason, I, I think we weren't allowed to use GPS on that one. And so I was having to land nav the entire team. And like land having yourself is a lot of pressure, but when you're land having a team, Ooh, that's way a hell of a lot. We're going through way like worse. villages and shit, and I'm like, I don't know if this is right, but we're just gonna keep going. I'm like going to Dylan, he's like, does this look right to you? Yeah, like, don't <laughs> tell nobody. You always gotta have that homie you trust that's yeah. like in the trenches with you. Like, yeah. Oh fuck. He's dude. like, yeah, yeah, sure. He's like, your ass isn't on the line. Yeah. Shit's terrifying, dude. And that, that's why it's. Uh, in selection, it's so important to continue to do land nav yeah. and get good at land nav because you will use that shit. Just like they always say, like technology, when you need it most, it will fail. Yep. And just like you experienced. And if you don't have that backup plan, that contingency plan, that's why in SF we plan for multiple contingencies. Mm-hmm. Like there's like A, B, C level plans, like multiple plans. And so, I mean, you need to have that technical proficiency to be able to land nav when you need to. Yeah, that's why I don't think it was a good idea that they pulled the land nav out of the Q course. Oh, the second one. Yeah, yeah the second it's, one. It, they're relying a lot on you to get that training on the team. And honestly, we I never got any training. land nav training on the teams? None. Yeah, oh. mine Mine was that that experience I just told you. That was yeah. when I was doing land nav on a team. Was Same. When it was like everything's on the line. Yeah. So land nav, the land nav experience I had started in selection, was not that great of experience, and then I honed it. Mm-hmm. to pass the Q course. Yeah. So that's multiple opportunities where you're worried about it and stressed about it and work on it to get better at it. Yeah. And, and so people going through nowadays, they don't know. So the star course in SFAS was tough. But when you got to uh, the Q course and you that did that one, way harder. that was brutal. There yeah. was so many people that failed that, that breezed through the first one. That yeah. course was absolutely a beast. It was a monster. And it Dude, took my movements were so fucking long, yeah. bro. It was Every bad. time I replotted my next point, I was like, Oh, yeah. like, that's so far. I got to go through here, like this draw, this draw. Oh, my the, God. But the, the thing is, it was a catch-22. You always got fucked in one way or the other. So you either had a short movement through draws yep. or you had a long movement without draws. And I got every single one in the Q course was a long movement without draws. <laughs> so I knew that I was just fucking like, hey, I have to appreciate the fact that I don't have to bust through a draw, but I got a fucking hike ahead of yeah. me and every single time. It would go to the top, and then I would plan out my next point, and it would go all the way to the yep. bottom of the fucking training area. And I was like, fuck you. And I was like, they're not going to do it again. And I get to the <laughs> bottom, shit would send me right back yep. to the top. Yep. Dude, I was like, fuck. I had fucking, uh, I'm pretty sure I had rap though after that because I, was, I wasn't drinking enough water, and I was like, just moving and then as soon as i finished i went and i had i like i felt sick and i went to take a piss and i've never had this before i piss brown iced tea Ooh. and i was like that's not good dude <laughs> and then i went to the field and the jackass was like all right go sit in the middle of the field in the baking sun i was like <laughs> fucking somebody saved my life and they're like dude you look like shit like drink this gatorade packet I drank that and it like brought me back and I was like, "Woo, I'm glad you were here." Yeah, that was a miserable experience. Yeah. 
And the fact they don't have to do it anymore, that sucks. That guy, is he who I think he is? That's who he is. That's some story for the bar. I'm sure they'll talk to you about that when we land. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> this guy just woke up. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 not only does he jump out the plane my favorite is the team sergeant's reaction he's just like yep <laughs> oh, well that happened <laughs> like, he doesn't do anything he was just like all right fuck i love the two guys that are waking up They're like what's happening <laughs> like, like, the guy's gone why is it so flying? windy in here <laughs> like you just had a, a fucking essentially they hyped him up to be to where everybody knows who he is it's yeah. essentially osama bin laden yeah <laughs> And he just jumps out of the fucking plane. Oh, uh, just yeeted himself yeah. right out the door. I believe Bro. I can fly. <laughs> I would tell that pilot, be like, bitch, you better go fucking land. We got to get his body. Yeah, for sure. Imagine if Osama Bin Laden, like, legit, you had someone like that, and they jumped out of the plane. Like, like we got to go get him. Nobody would believe that book. Nobody. <laughs> like, okay, you had him, and he jumped out of the plane? Yeah, 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 yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. And you didn't get him? Yeah. Uh, yeah, seriously, you, you, I would at least like you got to collect some teeth or something. To be like, no, he's dead as fuck. He went scuffed black. I just thought that I was not. A, I didn't remember that scene. So yeah. when I saw it, I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me, dude. <laughs> That's basically what went through his head too. He's like, God, motherfucker. Yeah, he's like, my job sucks. <laughs> I, just, I just want to retire. <laughs> So, hope well, you guys enjoyed this episode of the unit. We'll just keep cranking them out because these are fun ass shows yeah, to I love watch. It, man. Good shows. So, all right. Hope you enjoy. Check out the FNGAcademy.com. Hit mentorship if you want to sign up for the Patreon, support the channel. We really appreciate you. There's a $3 one if you just want to show some love um, and, and help us continue what we do and keep these coming. Please like and comment and subscribe if you haven't. Um, a lot of viewers that watch our show aren't subscribed. And that's hard because that's what helps us continue to grow so yeah. do that appreciate it check out the patreon check out uh, the ruck trainer if you are training for selection um it's the best tool out there hands down i promise you or we'll give you your money back talk to you guys next time